everything not explicitly forbidden in the Quran is halal. But there are many things not mentioned in the Quran that are wrong. In fact, even fiqh can't say they're wrong. So even in fiqh, it is not said to be wrong. What is it? For example, if I suddenly start talking while standing on my head here, it won't be haram. It won't be haram according to any sect either. Or I've come to your house sitting, in, sitting as a guest, I bid farewell in the God's name. I descended by throwing a rope from the window, not the door. So one day, for example, I came and dyed my hair purple and so on. In other words, we all find these things wrong. The important thing here is that we can find many things wrong, but we must not make haram every wrong thing we find. Whenever I explain this, some people are suddenly looking for an explanation. Actually, he's not aware that he's trying to find deficient of the Quran. Look, it's not said in the Quran either. For instance, someone said to me, it doesn't say in the Quran that he shouldn't marry his grandmother. I'm saying that in the Quran it is mentioned that one should not marry his grandmother. If it hadn't passed, it wouldn't have been haram, but it would still be wrong. It's mentioned in the Quran. Why? It says you cannot marry the woman your father has divorced. That's what is meant by the word father in the Quran. It also means grandfather. So grandmother is also among them. So it turns out that it is forbidden in the Quran, but let's say something doesn't come up. Okay, that's wrong. So sometimes it may be that some things may not have been explained in the Quran because they are so obvious. We may still find it wrong. I believe they are referred to as your father's wife. Yes, but that father expression in the Quran actually includes grandfather as well. But when you say it like that, people are straining themselves to find a prohibition that is not in the Quran, but everyone should object to. How can we find the deficiency of the Quran? I'm saying that that force is also felt very easily, Professor. Well, I'm saying, suppose you found it. Look, I'm not saying there's something left blank in the Quran. And it is, oh, it's a haram. It is said in the Surah al maid There are many things to be prohibited when the Quran is revealed. When the Quran was revealed, the, these issues have been left and not explained. So some matters are left to people's minds. If you do something wrong that's left to a person's mind, it will still be wrong. Let me give a simple example. In no sect, in the laws of the Republic of Turkey, America, Europe, for instance, there is no prohibition for a man at the age of 20 to marry an aunt at the age of 80. Religiously, it's not forbidden. It's not forbidden in any sect either. But if any of you had a brother, a relative, what are you doing? We would say, if you marry someone over 60, we all object because we find this wrong. But is it haram? No. Here we need to understand this. That means there are many wrongs that are not haram. So let no one think that they found something wrong, not in the Quran, and they have found a deficiency in the Quran. Well, the Quran describes what is haram to eat and drink. It is mentioned that homosexuality is haram. Murder, theft, bribery, investigating the secrets of Muslims, causing fitna behind people, mocking with eye and eyebrow gestures, to eat interest, to drink, to gamble, to believe in fortune arrows, trying to demean everyone with a mocking attitude. What else do you want? Everything is already in the Quran, so why are you looking for trouble? One must ask people. When you don't put this method, you see some people just come and say to you, this is haram, that is haram. You can't buy a dog house, you can't listen to music. For example, one of the scholars in the last days explains how to bathe because people can't manage it. You can't bathe naked because angels see. So angels have nothing better to do. They are peeping. There is material in the literature about it, but there is no such haram in the Quran. So the angels don't see us when we dress and undress, but only when we shower. There is also the opposite in the Hadith literature. I just read it in the Hadith literature recently regarding the prophet washing without clothes on and being naked and his wife holding a towel outside. And in fact, there's a famous hadith about prophet Moses that in my opinion is made up. So we should ask this man if prophet Moses and our prophet were not ashamed of the angels. So are you ashamed of the angels and these two prophets weren't? Because the sources you refer to and use these hadiths also narrate the others. You're making these sources the, a starting point seems doesn't lead us to, to a consistent place. These in literature are the hadiths that come with a single narrator or rather not with mutawatir. Hadiths not based on practice are called a had hadith. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, based on such single reports, we need to establish a methodology related to not making something haram that the Quran has made halal. Look, I'm underlining this, especially my favorite theologians make this mistake. They say to themselves, if we don't mention something about this, what will people say about us? Someone finds something very extreme. 
They are forcing the ayats to call it haram. If they can't find an ayat, they're forcing a hadith. Let's not use our skills in religion to make the Quran say what's on our mind. Let's use our skills to understand the Quran. Let's trust the Quran. The problem is, in my opinion, our trust in the Quran is actually low. I think these problems will be seriously solved if we increase our trust in the Quran. Already what you, uh, what you refer to as trust in this uh, Quran is mentioned in the books as faith in a technical and terminological sense. Uh, yes. Um, this is the methodology according to me. But again, this is a methodological thing in the Quran. Put the methodology about everything not haram is halal. It's important to put the methodology first. Because if you don't put the methodology first, you'll be startled when something comes against you. And you will avoid answering with something outside of that methodology. Yes, Professor.